What's up, TikTok? We're here for a 40 second breakdown of Shelby's album. Oh, Plural. Hello there. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Sorry, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, I'm Shelby. I'm joined today at Hotel Tatango in Montreal with my dear friend and very talented audio engineer, Shay Broussard. Hi, I'm Shay. <laughs> Great. This is Hotel Tatango, where we've made two albums together. We in did. In this very space. We have, and that is the reason why we are here today. Yes. We're going to be uh, taking a listen, doing a little retrospective breakdown of the work that we did on these two albums, which for me um, was actually not the intention when I started writing the first record, but ended up being kind of complementary to each other. Yeah, the story just continued. I had more to say, and so we made a second record. And uh, I think once we finished that one, it did feel complete. It felt like we completed the circle. So Shay... Can you, just to start us off, warm us up, can you give me a little bit of a, of a background into how you even got into audio engineering? Well, I got into audio engineering 15, 7, 16 years ago now. My audio engineering career can drive. It could get a license. Um, yeah, that's 16, right? <laughs> I'm sidetracked. I'm sidetracked. I used to play in bands when I was a teenager, and music, musically I was okay, but not very great. Um, but I found out very early on that if you buy recording gear, you can play in a lot of bands. So my whole thing was getting gear to record the bands that I was in, which made me be part of the band because I had all the recording gear. So, clever. And it's then, a clever way in. Yeah, and then I just, uh, over time, really enjoyed it and uh, got better at it and wanted to get better at it and pursue knowledge and uh, you know decided to choose it as a career path and went to school and... Uh, I've done some internships and things and ended up working here in Montreal's Hotel de Tango. So let's talk a little bit about how this these records came to be. We have had already been friends for a few years before I approached. Um, and I think if I had never met you, these albums would never have materialized. Whatever imposter syndrome I was harboring, you are the person who helped <laughs> push that out of the way for this art to be made. I have a an immense appreciation for that part of it, just at the beginning of this whole journey, this whole project, um, because I I brought the demos to you, I brought this idea, the concept of the first record to you, and you treated it with care and took it seriously, uh, not just as a friend, but as just like a person who works in the biz. And so I think that that was very important to just start things off, that you said, yeah, there's something in these demos, let's work on them. Yeah, I mean, that's the funnest part of any project is when you first get it and it's basically a, essentially a skeleton of a, what it will be in later, like a giant block of marble ready to be crafted. And like the songs are great and we had lots of ideas and had a great partnership of trying to figure out the directions and similar uh, inspiration as well as new and challenging things and brought in a lot of people who had different collective visions and it really resulted in two there's a through line through both albums, but at the same time, they're both kind of independently their own thing. And each song from song to song can be, end up being an entirely different thing. I'm glad that you see that because yeah. that was always the the intent. But it's very rewarding when that actually translates into something <laughs> that can be perceived by other people. I don't know. I'm so proud of what we made and I'm excited to to rediscover it now and dig in yeah. and, and play around in there to see go what's VH going on ones behind the music <laughs> yeah exactly because you know this whole <laughs> this whole presentation right now is super professional and yeah. we know exactly what we're doing this whole this whole thing is scripted believe it or not yeah absolutely even that part <laughs> even even this part right now <laughs> okay let's talk about the first record yep <clears throat> So I bring you these demos, we have a little meeting, you listen through to what I have going on. I've already given you like the four hour pitch <laughs> of what the record is. Yep. Uh, True. I already, so the thing with my process is I'm very much about the story. <laughs> and so this album was kind of fully formed in terms of it, the title was already in existence and i think you and everyone that i told the title to initially was like oh, that's a lot of words <laughs> it's a long that's a sentence 
some t- some parts of the process for me is like I just trust whatever my instinct is. I just go with it. I'm not questioning. And that was like something I had written down in a notebook when I was starting to kind of put these tunes together. And that's it just stuck through uh, because I think it encapsulated the, th- the themes of the record and the overall feel of the record so well. And it was so much easier once I had the title to build more to just like have more pull more things from that so I bring this very long title of a record and basically the sequence as is I think there was one sequence change but usually now with both records I came into the studio with pretty much the sequence yeah set for the first record I think the only thing that changed was running in circles and triangle choke were swapped but so for me the story of the record is always super clear and it's about figuring out how to actually bring that to life uh, from whatever I've written and whatever very sketchy demos. Cause at the beginning you were very patient with me. I brought you like voice memos basically of like unfinished <laughs> songs, like songs that the best I was doll. like, Oh, here's a, a one minute, 30 <clears throat> second song. And you're like, you should probably write another verse for that. Yeah. That would probably be better for you, <laughs> which is, you know, the guidance I needed at the time. Yeah. Like you said earlier, like, bringing together a story essentially and having all these ideas like kind of fully fleshed out all the way through it's like quite rare in album production like most people I would say kind of are figuring it out as they go and they have like a little like maybe I will record this song maybe I won't this isn't like but like your core core concept existed from the get-go essentially and was very structured in that way which I think lends itself to like making it easier to figure out like like everything kind of seemed like it was planned and like organized in a way that like the, you start thinking of sounds and you're like this sound can represent something here but mm-hmm. like, maybe we should tag it back in somehow in a different song and so it's like all these through lines throughout the album that I really wanted to keep that kind of uh, organization and like relatability to well the, all the songs are a lot of them are different and have so many different overdubs and things um, just to have like an ecosystem essentially that exists within a, a, like a like a quilt or a pastiche, if mm. you will. So it's like a whole unit, but there's so many connections and interwoven kind of ideas, which was really interesting to like brainstorm and think about. Like, I, I, similar to yourself, I usually just go by intuition, and a lot of the, what I heard and like uh, a lot of the ideas I I had was purely just intuition. But at the same time, this was an interesting exercise in trying to figure out. I never really am writing a song that doesn't have a very <laughs> clear story and world. What I didn't realize is that most people, well, no, I won't say most people, a lot of people do not write that way. A lot of it is sort of piecing things together on the other end of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was kind of fun, too, to discover what my process actually was, this being the first record. Also realizing that that process like works and that's a valid way to make art. I think it's coming into the studio for the first time, it can be very intimidating. Yeah, of course. And I was questioning, you know, like, oh, I mean, even like, is this worth making? I think is always the question when you are stepping into something, especially like I didn't go to school for music. And that was a lot of what was holding me back from from recording because I was sitting on songs for years before I finally approached you and said, can we make this thing? All art is always worth making. It's no, no question of it. It's basically intrinsic to ourselves to attempt to make it and like to not make it is just to devalue and rob yourself of an experience so no matter what or granted not all means can be done but in any way you should always you know just find talented folks uh make cool things and try to make sense of of everything you can and uh, coming to the studio for the first time is always intimidating even like coming on the first day of a project or anything and like there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of uh, like planning and like you want to be efficient and organized but also have fun and like try to be creative and not you're stressed but you don't want to be too stressed and that's uh something that I try to remedy and try to uh, I try to do things super fast and try to get things going quickly as possible make sure everybody's comfortable everyone has everything they need uh, to try to make that process as as uh, easy as possible but one of the fun things is like the unplanned you know, like when we essentially assembled a band for the record, like the, mm-hmm. there was no band, there was no rehearsals or no. something, right? It was just we assembled a band and then what all these people brought to the record, you can't plan f- that, you know, like you have no idea what's going to happen until you arrive. And then like everything, both records, we had some change of personnel and even like the way that both of those turned out, it's like they all have their own unique, cool world that made you stoked. Yeah. Yeah. 
and then like the exploration of finding it like it really elevates and changes like your entire perception of what you're trying to create too which is like the funnest part of the process for me at least no absolutely i'm completely on the same page with that i think that the thing that i sort of carry with me now looking back yeah. on you know we started the first record just about three years ago um looking back at the last three years since making the record it's like everyone that i met making the first record and putting it out i mean like i the fact that i didn't know any of those people before aside from yourself uh, and now they're all people that I call my friends and that are part yeah. of sort of my my social circle is like really, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> that is like not something that I necessarily went in expecting, no. um, but it is the thing that is that I hold most dear at this stage. It's like that's the thing, the most precious takeaway to me is the the friends I made along the way. It's not about where you go, <laughs> the music, it's the friends you made <laughs> the along was, the way. The, was after whatever the meme is. <laughs> it yeah. was the friends you made along the way. <laughs> it was never about the music, it was all about the friendship. But it's it's funny because it's at the end of the day, it's very important to be able to express yourself through your art. Yeah. And I think what I feared the most about doing a solo project of releasing music under my own name was that it was going to be extremely lonely and isolating, just like writing the music had been because yeah. I had done it completely in isolation. I was so stoked to have this experience of meeting all these fabulous people who connected with what I was doing and brought so much of their own creative expression and care and love to the work. And I think it really shows in, in the final result as well. But it's also a testament to your own <laughs> your own networking that you had done previously where you knew all these people and you really kind of picked out for me people you thought would mesh well with with myself and what I was doing and I think that is also a big part of it was you being yeah. kind of tuned into that yeah I mean it's the, the the greatest part about this job is like you get to meet so many fine folks and who all have incredible skills and talents and they're, they're super nice not everybody in music's uh, a positive person but you meet a lot of positive people in it so then you you know once you've once you got a roster of friends that are just incredibly talented it's it's just bring them together on different ways and share experiences with them. And like, you know, they meet new people all the time. Like it's just a, like a truly awesome experience, like making albums with, with fine folks, you know, but everybody who's a musician should at least do it once. Especially if they're, I don't know who's going to listen to or watch this, but I think yeah. if you're a person who is sitting on music that you've written or an idea or of a project and the hesitation is like, it doesn't matter or no one's going to listen to it or no one cares. Like it, <laughs> if it means something to you, that is enough of a justification to make the thing. hundred percent. Um, and that's really something that I had to let myself <laughs> internalize, uh, because so much of that, what was holding me back was this idea of like, Oh, well, but is this, this thing, what does it mean? And I was like, well, that <laughs> is completely irrelevant to the actual process of like just being a human making things. Yeah. Uh, with other humans and i think that that is um very important lessons very important sort of like process of maturing and healing these parts of myself that were insecure uh, yeah. and and i just had to do it i just had to try yeah and it's also inspiring right like i mean the first record was a little more uh you know there's a little more nerves and like uh not really fully knowing what's gonna happen and like there's a chaos to it that's like fun to do for yeah. the first time for sure but at the same time like once you got that out of the way and you saw what's possible like your ideas you had for mm -hmm. the second record was like right off the get-go you were like it needs to be more experimental it needs to do this we should get this we should get more people involved earlier try to get more things like and it shows because like listening back for the first record it's great, but you can see the through line and the development of it as your growth as an artist, as well as a writer, as well as a, a producer, right? You're producing and having these ideas, and it's like, you know, even the next thing you're going to do, it's going to change again. So, like, building and inspiring and, you know, I, it's, it's one of the finer things to do in life is to try to make an album and then have so much fun that you're going to keep making them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I appreciate every time that you are reflecting something back to me of, like, yeah, I saw this progression – because that's extremely validating. It's also, it's one thing to like feel it yourself. It's another thing for the people around you uh, to see it too. And that's yeah. 
that's awesome. And a lot of the feedback I got making the second one, people coming into the studio and hearing what we were doing, I was like, oh, this is a progression. This is yeah, for sure. something happened. Yeah. And a lot of that was just being in the studio, being in the environment, just trying things and learning that things existed, that there were things that I could, yeah. you know, machines that we could tinker with to make weird sounds. <laughs> making weird sounds is my favorite thing to do. And I think any experience that you're in that can open up the world a little bit for you is worth the time yeah, and the energy. Yes, absolutely. 